What's up, everyone? I'm back. Yeah, you heard that. I'm back. I'm back to the place where I rolled a brand new 1998 Jeep Wrangler TJ. No top on with myself, my fiance at the time, later my wife, my ex-wife now, and two of our close friends. Right here, I'm at the site in La Siena Guia, over here in New Mexico. It's a big dead man's turn. You see the big curve coming right here. And I think I just saw a sign that was 35 miles per hour. I, I know I was at least cranking at 65. It's probably about 65 miles per hour. Is that night I was back I had just gone back from my first uh, deployment overseas got back with that big old pile of cash and decided to get me a brand new Jeep Wrangler and I had come back home in the, the fall for what here in Santa Fe New Mexico we call the fiestas the Santa Fe and we were partying. We were partying fucking super hard, man. That was, uh, you know, I just kind of want to reset the stage here. Is <clears throat> this is going to be the chronicles of a drunk motherfucker to really convey the message of me and alcohol throughout my, my life. I party with a lot of fuckers. A lot of people in New Mexico, we partied our fucking asses off, man. And that behavior started so early, guys, so so early on. But I'm back here to the place where where I rolled my Jeep. Again, was coming around this turn here, La Siena Guia. It's dead man's turn. It was pitch black at night. We were going to another party. I literally remember driving down the road. If you know this area, but it's it's past what's a, there's an airport, there's a sewer plant, and I I remember we literally were passing around a, a fifth of Jose Cuervo Silver, just pounding, pounding, and fuck, we'd been drinking all day. And there's all kinds of signs here saying you know big turn, but it's pitch black. I mean this is out in the in the rural part of of this area, so there's no street lights or anything. Regardless, I was drunk as fuck, and here's the thing. No one was wearing seatbelts, you guys. And so the Jeep rolled like right here. There's some, there's a, I came around and the Jeep rolled up the hill, stopped on this embankment here. And then it rolled back down and it came to a rest right down in here. I think in this little ditch, there's a little ditch down in here. It came to a rest, upright. Unbelievable, all the tires were flat. It was pretty damn crazy. I feel sketched out just standing here right now. Again, kind of weird vibes. Then we took out all this fencing and again, the Jeep landed up. I was so out of it that I tried driving away. And I'm sure the there's 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 a few houses in this area. I'm sure these people were like freaked the fuck out and heard it and I know they called the cops quick because we were kind of coming to and we started um, freaking out, right? I was only 19 at the time, you guys. Check that out, 19, right? Rolling the Jeep right here, guys. This ain't no bullshit, man. This is my fucking story. I want, to, I want people to realize how alcohol has had such a fucking negative impact on my life. And I had to, I'm the kind of person, I'm, the, I'm that type of alcoholic. I'm not a responsible adult. I hope you are. I hope if you're watching this video, you're a responsible adult when it comes to alcohol. You know your limits, you know how to just unwind, have a couple, and, and that's cool. Whatever, whatever you think about it. For me, I'm a fucking drunk, right? I'm the guy that's one is too many and a thousand's never enough. And so as I come up on this 10 year anniversary, uh, I think it's really important as I own my stories to come back over here and, and capture, you know, what got me to this place because there's a lot of pain and suffering in my story. 
And it started early on here in this community of Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I was born and raised. You know, the drinking um, to, in high school. I mean, it was in high school, in junior high. Really, I, I, I remember the first time I probably had a, a beer. First time I tasted alcohol. I was at some sort of a summer party when I still lived in downtown Santa Fe uh, off East Buena Vista. And I remember it was either my stepdad or somebody, an older man, one of the males in the family, it could have been my uncle or somebody, came up to me and said, hey, dude, get over here. You're a man now. I think I was like 10 or 12, you know. And so the, the ritual of becoming a man is, is drinking beer. <laughs> Fuck, man. Ah, oh, we're fucked. But yeah, that was the that was the ritual of becoming a man was drinking beer. And so I cracked open that beer and fuck, that was the worst taste ever. I can still taste and have like the, the flashback of, of the bitterness and the beer is probably a shit beer too, but I just remember I was like <clears throat> This is disgusting, you know, like, what the fuck? Who drinks this shit? Can I just have a Coke, you know? Like, I was all freaked out, man. Like, it was not a, a pleasant experience. And I'm sure we all kind of can laugh about our first alcoholic experience. So it's good to find a little bit of humor in life, but this is a serious matter. You know, 19 years old, I was in the military. I was home on leave and there I was one night coming around that corner. Everybody's got to hit those brakes on that corner. And uh, clearly I did it. I had way too much uh, forward momentum. I was going about 65, 70 in a Jeep. And uh, we hit this bend hard right here. So back to the story, you know, we have this big old rollover. No one's wearing fucking seatbelts. Holy shit. And, you know, by the grace of God, by just an absolute miracle, we uh, we survived. You know, we survived that that accident. I can't believe that no one was killed. We should have all been dead, right? No one's wearing a seatbelt. There's no roof on the Jeep. Uh, it rolled at least twice, hit the berm, and then it popped back up. And I tried to drive out. As we heard the the sirens coming in, I you know everyone freaked the fuck out. One of the guy the guy that the other guy that was with us, he said he had a warrant, and so he kind of panicked. He thought he was going to go to jail that night, and so we pretty much I just told everyone my fiance at the time and that dude's girlfriend. I just said, hey, you guys get the fuck out of here. And so I think they went. They just ran. They took off. They went running to this party that we were headed to, and I went down with the ship. Right? I was the captain, I was the irresponsible 19 year old getting fucking wasted and, and driving a brand new Jeep Wrangler and, and um, it was fucked up you guys. That became a big time mess in my life in terms of how that rippled through in the military. I didn't get in some major trouble. I was able to take leave and, and I had to do, you know, I got arrested that night, clearly. You know, 19 year old, I got arrested that night and they were kind of leaning on me but that was um, that was a crazy that was a crazy event. That was a crazy time, you know. I think it was September seventh, um, nineteen ninety eight, and you know I shouldn't have been alive after that night. Or I should have learned my lesson. How about even better than that? Should have learned my lesson. I didn't. Right? But I sit here and I don't know. I mean, it's crazy even if I just kind of look over here. There's like little car parts. Yeah, who knows, man. Maybe little car parts off my Jeep. But that's why I take drinking so serious, you guys. Because I'm, I've am i been that fucker, man. I, I should not be alive or free. I was so irresponsible when it came to drinking alcohol. That... I just, I'm hard on myself about it, you guys, cause I'm, I'm just, I'm so irresponsible. You know, when I start getting the drink in me, I become a, a different person. I become the worst drunk motherfucker you can think of. And I'm gonna chronicle a lot of the details behind my addiction to alcohol and where it formulated in my youth, 
and how I wound up here one night with a, a Jeep, 19 years old, getting hauled off to jail. And, you know, when it comes to alcohol, those are all of, all the arrests, right? I say all the arrests, you guys, all the arrests. Fuck, you guys, this stuff sucks, man. It sucks. And that's why I'm willing to say, look, it's all on me. I want to be able to save someone's life, right? Can you imagine if this me stepping out, putting out this video out here, save someone life? Like they either, you know, who knows the ripple effects when someone opens the fuck up?